All praise, all glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the heavens and the earth and that which is between them. May his infinite, endless peace and blessings be upon the leader of creation, the jewel of creation, the purpose of creation, the beloved to Allah, the nearest to Allah, the dearest to Allah, none other than Sayyiduna Muhammad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Praises for Allah Almighty who has given us a beautiful life, a healthy life, alhamdulillah. When Allah Almighty gave life to mankind, when he bestowed each and every one of us sitting here a life, Allah Almighty did not make a promise that it will be a life without problems. In the recent past, or rather in the past we have read and we have seen non-believers questioning the destiny, questioning what Allah Almighty had ordained for them, testing and questioning that why has Allah Almighty given me such troubles. But when we look into the recent past, we see Muslims because they lack aqidah, they lack theology, they lack some weakness in their faith, they also have got onto the bandwagon and they question Allah Almighty as to why am I going to, through this trouble? Why are you testing me, Ya Allah? I mentioned that Allah Almighty did not make a promise that He will not test us. But Allah Almighty actually made a promise in the Quran that He will test us. He didn't say, I won't test you. He said, Wala nablu vannakum. We will surely, without a doubt, test you all. Allahu Akbar. The lam for taqeed. The noon at the end of this uh, word for taqeed, for stress. That we will surely, not that we might test you, we might not test you, no. We will surely test you. We will, like the mighty we of Allah Almighty, that we will surely test you. Ya Allah, how will you test us? Bi shay'im min al khawfi. We might test you through fear. You're going through a path, you're sitting on the aeroplane, the aeroplane goes through turbulence, and you are struck with fear. You think this is it now, this aeroplane, any second now, is going to end up in that ocean beneath me. This is why, you know, Muhammad Ali, this point came into my mind. Uh, he was fighting, he was at the youngest stage at that time. Uh, they said to him, you have to go to another country to fight. Muhammad Ali, the, the fighter, the boxer, he says to his trainer, he says, look, please, I beg you for the sake of God Almighty, that don't take me to another country. And even if you are going to take me, then please, let's go on a ferry. Muhammad Ali, the boxer, right? He says, please take me on a ferry. This man is, uh, the train is shocked, like, what's wrong with you? You're, you are one of the top boxers in the area, a lot of people know you in America and everything, and you're scared to sit on a plane, what's, what's wrong, what's the problem? He says, when the plane goes through turbulence, I get very scared. He says, well, that's the fear you have to beat, and this is why we're going to take a flight to the other country, and you're going to beat that, uh, that, that fear that you have within yourself. So even like people that we see and we might admire and we look up to that, oh, he doesn't have fear. Allah Almighty is the great one. He's the Almighty and he knows the hearts of everybody and he knows how I'm going to test this person. That like what's the cash to this person? Allah Almighty knows. And Allah Almighty tested Muhammad Ali for that reason. Allah Almighty goes on to say, well, you, we tested you through fear or maybe we didn't, but we'll test you through jew. Jew means what? Hunger. Hunger, that like we look, even in our own country, there are people out there who don't get sustenance, who don't get their two daily meals or three daily meals. Whether they need that or not, that's a different uh, reason altogether or a different case altogether, but whether they get that or not, or they have children that are young and they can't feed them, Allah Almighty is testing them. Because he said, we will surely test you, if not through fear, then through jew, hunger. Then he goes on to say, Wa naqsim min al amwal. Allahu Akbar, Ya Allah, you've not tested me through fear, you've not tested me through uh, hunger, but you have tested me and we are all, either we've been through this 
or we're going to go through this. How? Allah Almighty will take away from you someone that is very beloved to you. Someone that you care about, someone that you love, someone that you admire. Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your grandparents, your cousins, your auntie, your uncle. Allah Almighty, take. Oh angel, go and take him. Before he takes the next blink, take him. Before he says the next word, take him. Before he eats the next morsel, take him. That's your duty. Take him. Allah Almighty will test you. If not through uh, fear, jaw, uh, hunger, and then I will test you through taking of the soul of another person. Then he goes on to say, while anfus and life, maybe it's your own life. Maybe Allah Almighty is testing you within yourself. He's taking your eyesight. He's taking you the, 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 the power of hearing. He's taking that away. You become handi handicapped. You can't talk. Your speech has become impaired. Allah Almighty has taken that away from you. Who is going to dare to stand here and, Ya, ya Allah, why have you done that to me? Who's going to dare and say that to Allah? Well, people in the recent uh, age that we live in, they sort of not have the power, but they have the audacity. Like they, they, They're going asking Allah Almighty, like, why do you do that to me? But Allah Almighty, who's, <laughs> you say it, you can't reach him. You can't take anything away from Allah. Allah Almighty above all of this. Subhanallah. Wasamarat, and we will test you through fruits, right? Through taking away certain seasonal things that you are not able to eat. There are some people, multi-millionaires, and probably reach the list of billionaires, but they cannot eat certain foods because their body cannot digest it. They've been to doctors in America, they've been doctors into uh, the UK and uh, Germany and different countries, the best of the best. But the doctors cannot cure something that Allah Almighty has taken away from a person. I've tested you from this mean, that mean, that mean. These are the main means that Allah Almighty is testing a man from. And these people are tested from these things. Subhanallah. Wa bashiri sabirin. Then Allah Almighty goes on to say, Subhanallah, this is for the believers. This is for you and I, my brothers. Wa bashiri sabirin. And glad tidings for those who are patient. The Prophet wasallam is walking past a graveyard. Where is he walking past? A graveyard. Where is he walking past? A graveyard. You're with me, alhamdulillah. He's walking past a graveyard and there's a woman by the grave. And she's crying and she's wailing. So, oh my beloved son, you have left me. You've gone too young. The Prophet wasallam walking past the grave. He says, Isbir, Ya Ummi, have patience, O oh mother. She doesn't look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She says, she's looking at the grave. She's by the grave. She says, how do you know what difficulty I'm going through? How do you know what difficulty I'm going through for you to say that stay patient? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on his way. And one of the companions, after she'd calmed down, he went to her. He says, oh woman, oh mother, did you know who that was? He says, I didn't know who that was. He says, that's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who just advised you to be patient. And if you're patient, Allah Almighty will give you something back in return, which will be beautiful and kind and generous to you. And so she goes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She says, ya Rasulullah, ya Habib Allah, I did not know that was you. I didn't know that was you. For me to speak to you like that manner, please forgive me, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet ﷺ obviously very forgiving and all that, but he said to her that patience is at the point when the calamity strikes. Patience is when the calamity strikes. Like I spoke to Brother Tariq, I will mention that actually later on, because he lost his mother, and how he responded to me, like subhanallah. Like let's be honest people, we can speak like this, like this, this talk can be good and it might reach your ears and you might say, Masha Allah, Tabarakallah, beautiful, I like the way he's speaking. But calamity hasn't struck me. Calamity has not struck me and calamity might not have struck you as well. But when calamity does strike, as a reminder, we need to be from those who are patient. Walhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always say and praise us for Allah Almighty in every state when someone would pass away. He would say that. That was the way of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Almighty has made us a promise, my brothers, in the Quran that He will surely test us. 
There were ten companions that were guaranteed Al Jannah from the noble and the blessed and the beautiful and the kind and generous lips of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amongst them, Saad ibn Abi Waqqas. Saad ibn Abi Waqqas from those who is going to enter into Jannah. He goes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I have a question. Saad ibn Abi Waqqas doesn't ask a question for himself. He asks a question for the ummah that is yet to come. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I have a question. Kultu Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ayyu nasi ashaddu bala'an Which people are given the most difficulty? Which people are tried the most? Saad ibn Abi Waqqas asks the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam What does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Al-Anbiya'u The Prophets of Allah Almighty are tried the most. They go through the most difficulties. They go through the most hardships. فَالْأَمْثَلُ ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلُ فَالْأَمْثَلُ Then those who are like them and those that are like them. Meaning either the earlier three generations or the righteous people in general. They are the most tested people in the court of Allah Almighty. Then the Prophet ﷺ goes on to say, فَيُبْتَلَ الرَّجُلُ عَلَىٰ حَسْبِ دِينِهِ A man will continue to be tested in accordance to his religion. Meaning, how strong is he upon his faith? So Allah Almighty, in terms of that, tests him. فَإِنْ كَانَ دِينُهُ سُلْبًا اشْتَدَّ بَلَاؤُهُ And if his religion is strong, if he is a five waqt namazi in the masjid, he prays his tahajjud, he praises Allah Almighty continuously. He recites the Quran, one juice of the Quran daily. He reads all of these different things in different litanies. Allah Almighty tests him with such tests that this person, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. He's praising Allah Almighty. Then Allah Almighty goes, to, the Prophet ﷺ talks about the second person. How is the second person tested? The Prophet ﷺ says, Wa in kana fi deenhi rikkatun. And if in his deen there is slight weakness, like we are, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ubtuliya ala hasbi dinihi. Then he will be tested in accordance to how his religion is. Now if you think, I've not been tested, could be the case, I've not been tested, then that means maybe my religion is not strong enough for me to be tested. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in the house of Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha wa ardaha. And Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama that Ya Rasulullah, Ya Habib Allah, may my parents be ransomed for you. Why do you stand during the night until your feet swell? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama said that all of my brothers, meaning the Anbiya alayhi wa went through difficulties. How can it be that I don't go through difficulties? Then he went on to say that every prophet of Allah went through difficulties, but no one went through more difficulties than Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a hadith mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, a companion probably complaining in a sense for us to understand. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him to be patient and then said, do you know that when I get ill, when I fall ill, my falling ill is like two of your men. Uh, two people getting ill, like they putting that, that uh, severity of the illness together. This is the illness of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But you tell me, oh brothers, you've studied the seerah, you've read the seerah, you've sat with the imams, you've sat with the scholars, you've sat with the shiyukh. When have they told you that Muhammadur Rasulullah would complain? Which duration have you found till today that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was amongst those people that would complain to Allah Almighty? He goes to Taif to his relatives. He goes to Taif to his relatives. And when he is in Taif, he is not there for himself. He is there for Allah Almighty. And when he's there for Allah Almighty, he's calling them to the way of Allah Almighty. What do they do? And you all know this narration. That they pelted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with stones. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was blessed, noble. Those feet that were yet to reach the heavens. They made those blessed and honorable feet bleed. 
Blood is pouring from the feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And that is a long dua of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam in regards to what he said in Taif. And he, one of the things that he said in Taif was that, Ya Allah, if you're happy with me, then I've got no issue. If you are happy with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then I don't have an issue. But the fact of the matter is, Ya Allah, if you are angry with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then that can be an issue because I, whatever I do, my standing sitting, walking, talking is all for you, Ya Allah. It's all for you, Ya Allah. This is why whatever he said, whatever he uttered from his blessed and noble mouth, all for the sake of Allah Almighty, nothing for himself, subhanAllah. So we have to bear in mind that tests will come and go. Life goes on. But if you start complaining about tests, then remember one thing, my brothers. Allah Almighty will only test you more. He will continue to test you, test you, test you, test you, until you probably are stripped of the religion itself. And you're not saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah anymore. And the greatest blessing that you have in life in this moment in time is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We have nothing other than Allah and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama. This is why Allah Almighty then continues to say in the Quran after saying, Wa bashiri sabirin, Ida asabat hum musiba. When a musiba, when a difficulty reaches this person, what does he say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. These difficulties can strike me. But my eternal abode is with Allah Almighty and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For verily we are from Allah and to Allah we shall return. Right? That's, that's the eternal abode. That's the way we're heading. So these, affiliate, these afflictions and these difficulties that are affiliated with us are only affiliated with us that we are on the path of haq. We are on the righteous path. We are on the path to Allah Almighty and Allah will test you until the Prophet ﷺ goes on to say in a hadith, until the believer is sinless. The believer is sinless. Like we have no sins whatsoever. Then the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith mentioned in Sahih al-Muslim, he mentions that Ajaban li amri al-mu'mini Strange is the affair of the believer. Inna amrahu kullahu khayrun Surely every affair of the believer is good. وَلَيْسَ ذَاكَ لِيَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِمُؤْمِنِ And that is for nobody else other than the believer. When inna asabat sarra'u shakara When goodness reaches him, what does he say? Alhamdulillah, shukru lillah, fakana khayran lahu And that's good for him. وَإِذَا asabat darra'u sabara fakana khayran lahu And when a difficulty strikes this person, he praises Allah Almighty. He says, Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, I'm being patient. I'll be patient, Ya Allah. Fakana khayran lahu, and this is good for him. When Brother Tariq rang me in regards to his mother, I knew his mother for a long time. I got many du'as from her, Alhamdulillah, and uh, I knew her very many personally. I, I went to the house and stuff. I don't go to many people's houses, Alhamdulillah, I praise Allah Almighty for that. But he's somebody that whose house I've been to many, many times. Anyway, his mother used to give me a lot of du'as and things like that. Uh, long story short, when I spoke to him, very calm, very calm, very you know, in patient mode, nothing like you know, crying or wailing, oh Imam Sab, my mother's passed away, this, that, the other. If he was all the way around, maybe I would have been like that, but mashallah, the brother is mashallah, very patient. And I read this hadith to him. This hadith came to my mind, this hadith I just shared with you all. Ajaban li amri al mu'mini. How strange is the affair of the believer that everything about him is good. That when somebody dies in his family, he is patient. And he praises Allah Almighty that, Ya Allah, this is a ni'mah from you and you've taken him. Uh, we are all from Allah Almighty. We are ambassadors of Allah Almighty and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon the face of the planet. And Allah Almighty is going to take all of us from here. This is something that we will taste. And in the Zaikatul Maut, we will, each and every one of us will taste. And this, this person, mashallah, very patient all the way through. And I said to him, Subhanallah, imagine that, like, imagine that patience. His mother lived with him, he cared for her, he loved her, and everything, as we all love our mothers and fathers. 
But when your mother leaves, or when somebody even, some, like imagine when a guest comes to your house and he lives there for three weeks, two weeks, and then he leaves. Tell me, oh people, do you not feel a hole in your heart? That, oh my God, my beloved guest, my beautiful guest, the one that I probably didn't agree with 100%, but he lived in my house. For such a long time, we shared memories, we shared tours, you know, we went out, this are the other 101 things, and today he is gone. I feel that pain in my heart. And here is for somebody, a mother who has left the dunya. This person has left the town, this person's mother has left the dunya, and he is patient, and he praises Allah Almighty. Subhanallah. There is a hadith mentioned in Tirmizi, and I will finish with this hadith, inshallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he mentions, that Allah Almighty orders the angel of death to take the baby of somebody, a child, two years old, four years old, six years old, and that child has been taken away. And the angels go back to Allah Almighty and they say, Ya Allah, we've done our duty. So Allah Almighty asks, like, you took away the child of one of my servants? They said, Ya Allah, yes, Ya Allah, we, we, we took the baby of your servant. The, the Allah Almighty then goes on to say, you took away like the, the, the cherry of the eye, yani the beauty of the eye away from them. They say, yes, Ya Allah, we did that. Allah Almighty then obviously knows everything, but he asks the angels, how did he respond or how did she respond? And the angels say, Ya Allah, they praised you. They praised you. They said, Alhamdulillah, you've taken our amana, which was from you. It's a, you know, a gift from you. And Ya Allah, you've taken them away. You've taken her away. Alhamdulillah, Allah Almighty instructs the angels. He instructs the angels, make for him a house in Jannah. Make for him a house in paradise and call it the house of praise. Baytul Hamd. Name it Baytul Hamd. Someone's mother passes away, more beloved to him. Someone's father passes away, more beloved to him. And he's patient at that time. Imagine what Allah Almighty will give to that person. Are we talking about tests and trials? I know so many you know, people amongst the circle of people that we associate with whose mothers passed away, whose fathers passed away, yet they have carried on the legacy of their parents by giving sadaqah, by giving in the way of Allah Almighty, by associating with their friends, by keeping close affiliation with their friends, that you were a friend of my father, you were a friend of my mother, due to that I have an affiliation with you because when I look at you, you remind me of my mother. When I looked at Brother Tariq's mother, she reminded me of my grandmother. Subhanallah, so there's an affiliation and link everywhere that we need to, as Muslim Ummah, we need to get hold of and we need to be a source of peace and tranquility for each and every one. Right, because we're going to lose, it doesn't matter how rich you are, or how poor you are, what your worldly status is, my brothers. You will find out reality when your beloved one dies that day. When they are lying there in front of you in the coffin, then we will see who is a big man. Then we will see who is this leader of a community or this, that, the other. Remember, my brothers, we have to remember mouth. We have to remember tests and trials. These are all from Allah Almighty. And we have to praise Allah Almighty. Remember... The society that we live in, a lot of our youngsters who are present here, mashallah, they want to be Duchesne, they want to be Sully, they want to be Jamie and these boys from Top Boy. Top Boys ain't going to be there for you. This is a doggy dog will, my brothers, right? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Arrajulu ala dini khalilihi fal ahadukum man yukhalil. A man, a woman is on the pathway of their friends. Each and every one of you should take care in selecting your friends. Select those friends that will get you closer to Allah Almighty, not those friends who will make you road boys and road girls and ZTs and this Ts and that Ts. We need Muslims. We, didn't, we don't need those people on our streets and we don't need those people on our streets, inshallah ta'ala. I praise Allah Almighty and we pray to Allah Almighty that he blesses each and every one of you and makes you from those who are strong believers, inshallah. Any test, any trials that you are going through, Allah Almighty alleviate you from them insha'Allah ta'ala wa akulu qawli hadha astaghfirullahi li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad